Welcome back. Let's build a data path to execute the following instructions. These are immediate instructions, which means that one of the data values on the instruction is hard-coded and not from the register file. So in order to do that, let's clean this up a little bit. What we really want to do, so instead of uh, these register to register instructions, what we want to do instead is be able to execute, say, an add immediate and, you know, maybe an instruction like this where we add the number 5 to x3 and we put the result into x2. And then I want to clean this, I want to clean this diagram up because we're going to, we're going to do things a little bit differently here. First thing I want to do is split out the instruction to route the appropriate signals into the register file. Let's see if I have this right. So from so bit 7 to bit 11, that uh, looks correct. And then bit 15 through 19 is correct. And then 20 through 24. Yeah, that looks correct. Now let's space this out a bit better so we can kind of see those. Okay. And then let's flip this upside down. Okay, and let's use some uh, tunnels to connect these. Now I know what you may be thinking, if you saw my prior video on the immediate generator, I did these in a series of splitters, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to use one of those splitters because uh, really, as far as the register file is concerned, um, these three inputs are really the same across all the record types. So in order to execute an immediate instruction, uh, like uh, add immediate, for example, what that ultimately means is instead of data B of the ALU getting its data from uh, the val from the register file RS2, what it really means is getting a value from the immediate generator, really this component right here. So really this value needs to get routed to data B as opposed to RS2. So why don't we create a component to do that? Let's call this component ALU uh, CTL for ALU control. Let's create some inputs and outputs. So for input, we're going to need, we're going to want input from register source 2. And then we're going to want our input from the immediate generator. And then we need a selector to select between these two, and let's just call this the B selector. And then we need either one of these to go to the data B output. So let's create our output. And so to implement this, really, it's just a simple multiplexer. Okay, it's really that simple. Uh, now, this you might say, well, why create a component for something this simple? Well, um, you know, there's going to be more decisions that we need to make about um, what gets routed into data A, and that'll be for a future video. So we'll be building this one out over time.
Right, so that allows us then to put our ALU control into this picture now. And you can see now where data B, we, this connection will go and we'll really be inserting ALU control in between here, right? So something like this. Okay, so let's hook up a few more things. Let's hook up our instruction to the immediate generator. So we're gonna need a tunnel. Okay, and our control logic, obviously an instruction, it, it, it gets an, an instruction for its input. And then the ALU select and the register write enable, well, you know, we have these signals here. So why don't we go ahead and route those? Okay, and then the other signal that I don't have here that I deleted was um, to be able to route uh, the register data to be written from the output of the ALU. So let's just do that. Okay, this looks a lot cleaner. Now, what do we have left? Well, we have a B selector signal for the ALU control, which again is going to determine what data B is, whether it comes from the register file or whether it comes from the immediate generator. And then we have the selector for the immediate generator itself, which tells us what kind of instruction record we have. In this case, we're looking for the I instruction format record. So those signals then should come from the control logic, but of course we don't have those signals built into the control logic or the truth table set up for that matter to uh, determine when those signals should be set high or low. So why don't we work on the truth table then? So let's modify our truth table. Let's put in these instructions. Right, okay, so let's fill in the input signals for these instructions. So um, I30 is indicated through func7, uh, and in this case, the only bit on I30 that's high for these group of instructions is the SRAI instruction. That's what the um, immediate 5 to 11 says, which if you look down here on the I type, uh, immediate 11 through 10, I'm sorry, immediate 11 through zero is 31 through 20. It's a little convoluted the way they have this uh, table indicated, but if you go from the immediate five to 11 and do uh, hex 32, which is what that is, you come to this bit 30 being high here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in for SRAI. I'm going to fill bit 30 in as high, and I'm gonna put the rest of these as low. Okay, so uh, I 14, 13, and 12 from the instruction, that's funct three, again, indicated here, both on the I type and the R type, right? So um, really we just need to fill in these values here, uh, convert these hex values into binary values here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now that's done. So the opcodes for these immediate instructions are all the same here. Of course, note they are different than the register to register instructions, but that makes sense because these are immediate instructions and that's the way uh, ultimately that we can tell the difference between the two. So uh, let's go ahead and fill these in. All right, and let's extend our formula.
Now, so far as our outputs go, remember, we need some new outputs. If we go back to our data path, uh, we can see that we need a, a immediate generator selector, and this is three bits. And then we need the ALU control signal, the B selector signal. So let's go ahead and add those. So we need our immediate selector, I'll call that IS, uh, three, IS2, IS1, uh, sorry, 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 it's three bits, so it should be uh, IS2, IS1, and IS0. And then we need the B selector. Okay, so to fill in the ALU selector for uh, all of these immediate instructions here, uh, the ALU is going to need to be selected in the same way. So the, there's no difference between an add instruction and an add immediate instruction in terms of the selector that you need to send to the ALU. So I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, these selector values down to their uh, corresponding immediate version. I can't directly copy because you'll notice that there is a subtract register to register instruction when there is not one uh, for the immediate. So the, the direct copy won't work. And I think these may be a little out of order, so um, I'm just going to do them one at a time. Okay, those all look correct. So now for the register write enable, uh, again, we are writing the result of the ALU back to the register file uh, amongst all of these instructions. So in this case, these all need to be high again. So what do our immediate selector signals need to be for the cases where the instructions that we're dealing with are register to register. Well, in fact, it doesn't really matter what they are because we're not we're not creating an immediate value anyway. So I'm just going to set them all to zero. Now for the B selector, remember when we built the uh, ALU control component, the B selector was high whenever we wanted to select the immediate value for the data B input of the ALU. So what that means is the registered register versions are all supposed to be set low. So let's just go ahead and take care of B select. We're gonna set that to low for those R to R instructions and then we're gonna set this one high for all of the immediate instructions. Okay, so what does the immediate select value need to be for the I record type instructions, which of course these all are, as you can see here from this format column. If we go back to our immediate generator, we can see that the I out on this multiplexer should be set to zero. So in fact, all of these should be set to zero. Okay, so our output binary number here, uh, I need to extend to include the four additional columns that we added. So I'm going to do that. Okay, and so I think the truth table is now done. Okay, so now we need to modify our control logic to include these new signals that we added into the output of the truth table. So let's do that. So the first thing is that our ROM, instead of having five bits on output, now needs to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
needs to have nine bits. So let's make that change. And let's create a new splitter. So we need new outputs, right? So uh, we need uh, an output for the immediate selector. So let's put that out there. And that was three data bits. Let's put a splitter out here. And let's put some tunnels. Okay, and so since I added the uh, new control signals to the least significant part of the uh, output, uh, what that really means is we need to move these existing signals down to the end. I could have probably done it the other way and wouldn't have to move these, but I didn't. So that's no big deal. We'll just move these down. And then, and then finally, we need the B selector signal. And so I think that's all that's needed to be done to the control logic. Uh, now, the question then is, how do we get data into the uh, control logic ROM? And, and in the last video that I did, I created a Python script to do that. Uh, so we need to make some modifications to that Python script in order to uh, get the new ROM file to load into Logisim. So let's do that. So this uh, link to this Python script is in the description. Let's make some modifications to it. So the 512 addressable word ROM needs to stay that way because we didn't change the number of input bits. However, we did change the number of output bits to nine. I also, though, do need to change this because if you'll notice on the logic table, uh, I did add another row here for you know, labeling these signals funct3 and labeling the opcode. So we need to skip these first two lines as opposed to skipping the first one line. So I'm gonna change this to skip two lines. And so I believe this this next, these next uh, instructions here are fine, uh, but if we scroll down here, we were putting out two digits of hexadecimal value. However, we have nine bits now of output, um, and two, uh, two hexadecimal values will only give you up to 255. So we actually need to put out three hexadecimal digits in order to be able to make this work. So I believe that is all of the change that we need to make to the ROM. So what we need though, is we need to get a new uh, export from the truth table spreadsheet um, to put into this directory. So let me do that.
And here we are. New truth table, a comma separated value file. So now all we need to do is run this script. So let me open a terminal. Actually, let me enable my virtual environment here. Now, to run the script, it's simply Python uh, build ROM and standard in, we want the truth table. And on the output, we'll just call it control.rom. Now let's have a look at our control ROM. Well, it's hard to tell if that's correct, but it looks right. Let's go ahead and import this into Logisim. Okay, we have that loaded. Uh, let's test. Well, actually, oh, before we test, we do have a few things that are not hooked up here. So now you can see we have our control logic with the immediate selector and the B selector uh, that we can now hook up to these respective components. So let's do that. Okay, let's test this. So this add I instruction, let's convert this to machine language. So add I X2, X3, 5. Hit the build button. And this is our machine language. So 518113. Since my memory is so horrible, I'm going to double check that. 518131. Oh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> 113. And just to make sure we know this is hex. And put that in there. Okay, right. So let's put this into the instruction. Now immediately we get an output of five and that's probably correct because what we have in X3 right now is probably zero. But let's go in and double check. Right, we have a zero in X3, so let's put, uh, let's just put a one in here. And let's go back to our data path. And now we have a six. So it does look like we are adding the immediate instruction of five into X3. And then we need to tick the clock to see if we get this six into uh, register X2. So let's tick the clock. And then back into the register file. And indeed, we have six into X2. So first indication appears as though we have immediate instructions working. Okay, let's put a register to register instruction in. I will need to put one back in. So let's just do an add instruction, X2, X3, X4, do a build. 418133. 418133. Right, so let's put that in, that instruction. Okay, and let's put some different values into our register file for um, registers X3 and X4. So for X3, Let's put in uh, let's put in th uh, 
three. And we'll put in a four here. And we get a seven, which again, this now seems like it's still working for our registered register type instructions. Let's tick the clock. And then we should see seven loaded into uh, X2. And we do. So while I'm not going to test the rest of these instructions, I'm going to assume they work. Of course, that assumes that I didn't make a mistake in the truth table. But, you know, incoming videos will be continuing to sort of um, make some additions and I will, um, you know, continue to exercise these instructions as we go. Thanks for watching.